Hello there. Welcome to the Strong by Design podcast. Hosting today, you know it. It's Coach Chris's voice today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we take turns here at Strong by Design. We have some terrific people in the building that like to host the show. Uh, over the years, uh, Coach Mike, Mike Westerdahl, the founder of Critical Bench, one of my closest friends. Um, and of course, Jared Haley, who has hosted the last couple episodes that aired uh, some terrific conversations there. Go back and listen to those. Uh, we we have just a great cast of characters uh, over the years who have uh, taken the reins and hosted some amazing conversations with truly uh, terrific people, experts, and people from all walks of life that have a story to tell and to somehow help you live a life that's stronger by design. Uh, you are strong by design, by the way you design your life. Uh, you're made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. And we believe that 100%. And it's our um, our way of giving back here at Critical Bench. Uh, we've been around almost 25 years now. We started this podcast five years ago. And it's been quite the journey and the hundreds and hundreds of conversations we've had that really benefit us so much, but then we get to share with the world and hopefully reach somebody, touch somebody's life on the other side of the globe. And um, we are heard in almost 80 countries and the show is growing and impacting lives. And we just couldn't be more uh, grateful for the opportunity. It really is like a ministry for us. Um, and I, I selfishly uh, just enjoy these conversations um, that I probably wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to have. So if uh, you're a, a, a first time listener to the show, welcome. Great to have you. We have uh, several hundred episodes behind uh, for you to scroll through and binge us. Uh, if you're a return listener of the show, then welcome back. Uh, it's it's so great to have you. If I could ask one thing that you could do for us that really helps us here on Strong by Design. Again, we're not monetized. We don't do this uh, for money. We do this because it it's transformative. It changes lives. It, it benefits people. Um, and that's really, truly why we do it. But if you could share this episode with a friend or family member, uh, just one person that you can think of that would benefit from the information today that you hear, the story that you hear, uh, that would mean so much to me and to our team. So thank you for that in advance. So our guest today, an incredible guy that I, I got to uh, know a little bit more about and, and kind of have a, a planning conversation just last week to kind of go over what we were going to be discussing today. I found out about this amazing person from Joe Miller, a past host and content provider here at Critical Bench who in her own right is a superhero. And she had told me about this gentleman multiple times about his impact in her life and really getting the best out of her at a time where she was kind of at her lowest. And uh, and uh, and so our guest today, Brian Allsrue, he is a, a beast. He's a, a, a big hulking man. I tell you what, I, I, I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad he's not here. I, I, I feel really small. He's a, a, a strength, um, a power lifting, a strong man coach. I mean, his content's fantastic. Uh, he'll he'll provide uh, you some information at the end where you can can uh, see his content on YouTube. He's an amazing YouTube channel, and uh, he really brought Joe out of a, a dark place and got her interested in strongman competition. This is a, a girl that was doing powerlifting and never considered it, and then became. Uh, in her own right, pretty terrific. Uh, yeah. She's like like mini, uh, what do you call it? Mini Mouse or Supergirl or Superwoman or something. She's she's unbelievable, and she she told me about this amazing person who really helped her shine and bring get that light back inside of her and that fire back inside of her. And um, and and just recently, she reached out and told me a little bit about Brian and, and I was eager to get him on the show. And so here he is, he has an amazing story to share with you all today. And I can't wait to know a little bit more about him and his journey in this life. Oh, and, and, and he has a dog. So he's instantly <laughs> pretty cool. Cause we love dogs here at critical bench. That's a That's big cool. dog. Is that Rhodesian? No, what is that? Yep. Yeah. Good call, man. Great. Rhodesian. Yeah, Rhodesian Ridgeback. Yeah. Ridgeback. We have people... They're oh. awesome. Dogs are beautiful. Yeah, That's, he's he's awesome. He's about 140 pounds. Yeah, they're monsters. Uh, they're huge. 
Yeah, but the most loyal dog I've ever had in my life. Wow, dude. Well, Brian, welcome to Strong by Design. <laughs> that was the perfect, that's perfect intro. And that was like the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. So thank you so much, man. That was <laughs> that was such a cool intro. And then Kona showed up and brought us in. So I love it, man. Kona. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's a, it's a blessing to have you. Um, just knowing what I, I know about you, uh, based on what Joe Miller shared and our from our conversation, um, I, I was really thinking about this uh, a lot over the last few days. And I have a lot of my own questions and things. And um, but, you know, I only know so much from a you know 15 minute call. So sure. I, I really can't wait to know a little bit more. Uh, we can go a little deeper and and it's a, it's a testament to obviously where you are now and, and, and all of the challenges and things that you've, you've endured in your life. So um, I think this is a great episode for people who, um, you know, are struggling with something, you know, having a big obstacle in their way um, and feel like, how how am I going to get past this? And sometimes it's the, a little conversation or just something that's off the radar that kind of changes things for you. And, um, before we get into it, so I really want you to share a little bit of your backstory. There's a book I read years ago. Gosh, I don't know how many years ago it was. It was before kids. It was a long time ago, dude. Back, you know, when it was just me and my wife and like life was pretty, pretty yeah. easy, even though at the time we thought it was hard. It was like, right, no, right. pretty easy. There's a book I call uh, I read called Merle's Door. Huh. And it's about a guy and his dog. And the dog, I believe, is a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Really? I believe. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it is. This story is so touching. It's it's based on a real, real dog, a, a real relationship between a, a man and his dog. I, I urge you to get this book because I think you'll read it like, I think you'll probably read it in like a day. It's so good. And I was a, t- a complete disaster mess at the end of this book, reading this book. I was this so emotionally great. connected. It sounds like such a great time. <laughs> Merle, Man, dude. I, I love that. But uh, I am so attached to him. Like like what you just said, I was like, oh, I hope this ends well. I hope this ends well. well. <laughs> it's about this dog's life. It's a beautiful right. story. And sure. it's the whole life of this dog from when sure. he met this dog un- all the way through to the end. And it's... We all know when we get involved in a relationship with an animal that it's yeah. finite. Temporary. Uh, yeah. But it's worth it always, yeah. every single time. And I, we have two dogs. I, I've always had dogs my whole life since I was a little kid. And it's like, I know this episode's not about dogs, but <laughs> I, I think if, if, you're, if you're, you're, your status as a human being goes up a notch for me, I think when, when you're a dog person, you know. And, I'm uh, with you, man. I'm on the same page. Yeah. So, man. So anyway, Merle's door, check it out. I can always I shoot you a link or something. You will absolutely love that book. So, so we already know your dog lover, you are a big, strong, muscular guy. People know that in two seconds looking <laughs> at you on YouTube. Was it always that way for you? What drew you to performance and to strength and to, to, to training? Well, um, I guess I, I was born in 1980, right? So, uh, I see action figures behind you. Like I grew up around like He-Man, Ninja Turtles, like Rocky, everyone that like I admired in the eighties yep. had muscles. Like if you were cool, you had muscles. So from a young age, like I, I, it was something that I always aspired to, whether it was like American gladiators or watching predator, you know what I mean? Like every, everyone had big shoulders mm-hmm. and big arms, big chest. So it was important for me. So even from like a young age, I can remember always doing like pull-ups and push-ups and sit-ups and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, as I got a little bit older, I got involved in martial arts because of people like Jean-Claude Van Damme and and like that whole genre, you know, yeah. and, uh, and blood sport. Third, yeah, blood <laughs> sport is one of my favorite movies. I can recite every word of that thing. I bet. So I got real involved in martial arts, which led to jujitsu and mixed martial arts, because now we're into like the 90s when like UFC came around like 92, 93. And then uh, so I was just kind of dabbling in all that. And uh Went away to college in uh, 1998, graduated in 2002, and didn't know what I wanted to do. So I got a job at a gym uh, because I was just still involved in strength. And, of course, my parents were like, why did we send you to college? You're you're just going to be a personal trainer. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> and I just kept, I just kept doing it and didn't, didn't really care. Kept living my life and kept, kept progressing in this. Um, some random things happened. I ended up uh, going into the government for counterterrorism and for the next decade, wasn't around a whole lot, like traveled a ton. Um, and so I uh, decided that life wasn't for me anymore. So I uh, decided to get out of that and started my own gym. Now, in that process, uh, when I was in high school, one of my best friends was named Mike Jenkins. And Mike Jenkins is a strongman competitor from kind of back in the day now, because unfortunately in 2013, he died. Uh, but if you're a strongman fan at all, and you've you've probably seen him, you'd recognize him, right? And uh, so we were friends in high school. And then as I moved on to doing that personal training after college and stuff, we were working at the same gyms, training together at the same gym, doing all those types of things. And he was always like, man, you need to do this strongman thing. You would be awesome at it. Because I was pretty strong at the time. I was probably benching like mid four, squatting like mid fives type of the weight. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, but I, all that I knew from strongman was that they were like seven foot tall and like 400 pounds and everyone's big and fat. And I was like, that doesn't fit my Jean-Claude Van Damme image. I'm doing this like mixed martial arts thing. Like I want to keep like abs and stuff. And so I always just kind of placated him and was like, yeah, man, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Anyway, I left for the government. Uh, we lost touch over that decade. I got back in town. And when I did, uh, I just so happened to run into someone who ended up being Mike's sponsor, Mike's first sponsor, and uh, had never met the guy before in my life. And the guy was like, hey, you know Mike Jenkins. Mike knows you. I'm going to have a Christmas party where Mike's going to be there. Let's get you guys reunited. Well, Thanksgiving right before that Christmas party was the night that Mike died. So uh, woke up Thanksgiving morning. Mike had died. It was pretty shattering for a lot of people in his life. Um, and so instead of going to Christmas party, I ended up going to a funeral. And uh, I know I mentioned this to you when we were just talking a little bit, but yeah. it's a weird room when I go in there and I'm like the smallest guy. Right. And I walked in and I was like, this whole room's like vibrating with energy. You know what I mean? And it's a funeral. It's not even like it's supposed to be vibrating with energy, but like there's a lot of guys that have a lot of intensity, whatever that is. Right. And the only other place that I experienced that was through fighting world, except uh, it was kind of a more mean energy there than it was yeah. in this. Right. Yeah. This is anyway, more, a little bit more jovial, but like powerful and intense. <laughs> yes. But like, it didn't feel like a place you could joke around, right? Like, like prison, <laughs> like, right. you know what I mean? Like it was a place to be serious, you know, yeah, even though, right. you know, anyway, um, at that funeral, I, I, I said, you know what, I will do a strongman competition because of Mike, yeah. you know, how people get at funerals and stuff. Like sure. you're like, I'm going to dedicate something to this person. So I did. And a couple months later, I was signed up uh, for my first strongman competition, but I had never touched a strongman implement in my life. Right. I'd never touched a stone. I didn't know what a farmer's walk was. None of that. So my the sponsor guy that I was talking to, his name's David Lee. He's one of the greatest guys in the world. He contacted Mike Jenkins' wife, Carrie Jenkins, at the time, and was like, hey, they owned a gym in Pennsylvania. It was like, can Brian come up and you just like, can he touch the toys so that he's going to compete in a week and he he doesn't know what he's doing. So I go up and she just shows me a couple things. She's like, I've seen Mike do this with like stones and stuff. And so I screw around with stuff and I'm like, I think I can do this. I'm a pretty strong guy. Uh, so I go the very next weekend, I go and I compete in my first strongman competition and I ended up coming first place. So coming in first place at this level of strongman competition means that I uh, qualify for nationals. Uh, and I'm wow. thinking I walked into my first strongman competition, just walked through everybody. It wasn't a big deal. I'm probably going to do pretty well at nationals. I have a really good shot. To probably be one of the strongest people in America. That was my brain, right? That was your brain. And that this was my is brain. like this is like what 2014? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2014. And so I show up in nationals and everyone's like, man, all you want to do at nationals is just not come in last. That's your goal for nationals. Don't come in last. And I'm like, I'm here to win, right? After like the first two events, I was, it became very, very clear that I was not going to win. <laughs> I was not going to come anywhere remotely close to winning. Right. So it was like a big bunch of humble pie, but I learned so many things at that first strongman uh, nationals event. Cause um, the first event it was in Reno and, and it was a desert. And like the first day went from like eight in the morning until like nine o'clock at night. We we're out there with floodlights doing car deadlifts and dudes were like, their noses were like bursting from the pressure. Guys were passing out. 
everyone was projectile vomiting. It was literally like a horror show to like a guy who didn't know what he's doing. He never oh, yeah. strapped to a hard deadlift. And I'm asking people around me, I'm like, hey, how do I do this? And guys are like, show me. And it was really cool. I mean, everyone was awesome. And that's, wow. I learned about the camaraderie of strongman and how uh, no one is strongman wants to beat you on a technicality. They literally are like, your shoes didn't come in on the flight thing. You can have my shoes because I'm going to beat you at your best. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? And so that was a cool, that was a cool thing. And I had uh, recently found out that I had a brain tumor, so I couldn't get hit in the head anymore. So like MMA was out, I can still do jujitsu and stuff, but like, I'm not getting punched in the head anymore. So I need something to replace it. So I jumped in a strong man, literally a couple months later, opened a gym. And then literally uh, it was kind of crazy how it all happened. Uh, the first, like, I'd say six months, nothing was going on, man. Like I couldn't pay people to come to the gym. Uh, I couldn't, it, it just nothing. Right. So I was like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel to kind of answer a lot of the questions that the gym members have about like how to squat, squat cues, how to do this, how to do that. And so that they could watch that before the, the classes, we could all get together and be more productive for everybody. And then YouTube started taking off a little bit. I got involved with Alan Thrall and kind of did a couple collaborations around um, long story short, within like three years, I was eating breakfast with Arnold Schwarzenegger and going to the Arnold and just doing things that I was like, I never would have ever dreamt that I ever could have gotten to this level of, of this sport. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it's been a really, really cool ride. However, uh, as that was going on, I guess, 2016, I was at nationals, national championships. And at that time I was 273 pounds. And legit was, I'm not going to say that I was going to win nationals or anything like that, but I was much more of a competitor than I was at the time, like benching over 500 pounds, deadlifting mid sevens, squatting mid sevens, like definitely a different level of competitor than I was prior. Uh, and one day I woke up and started feeling sick and like nauseous to my stomach, uh, kind of progressively got worse each day. Stopped like taking protein shakes in the morning, like tried changing up all type of ritual things. Just kept getting more and more sick, started throwing up. The throwing got worse and worse and worse. And from there, it just progressed to a point where I was throwing up 30 to 50 times a day, every single day. And when I say throwing up, uh, I, I stopped eating food, right? Because I uh, I talked to you about it the other day, but uh, I would be like in the middle of a store, like a grocery store, and I'd be like, I'm going to grab some tuna fish and literally without warning, just throw up like right on the ground. It was like super embarrassing. I'd be driving my car and throw up on myself and like have to like cancel place because I was like, I can't go. I, I I throw up all over myself. Like my voice changed completely. Like if you go back and watch my YouTube channel, you'll see an area where my voice just got completely fried from bile. Like because oh. I just couldn't stop. So yeah. really, really rough. I mean, imagine like food poisoning for years. Right. So jumping around to all types of doctors, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, I'm already insomniac from some trauma as a, tra as a child, but this made it much, much worse because I would wake up and whenever I would get relief and be able to fall asleep, I would wake up literally because my body would start vomiting again and I would be aspirating on, on vomit. <laughs> That's how I'd be waking up in the middle of the night and then be up from literally like one o'clock for a 20 hour cycle every day. Like it's, so, it's not, it sounds like a horror story. Like this it, is what I, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. No, you, I, there was a show like probably like decade and a half ago called like monsters inside me. I remember that show. My wife and I, so my wife's a veterinary nurse actually just became an RN. She's yes. the grosser, the better. Yeah. So like worms and stuff. So yeah. the, I had a couple parasites in me from my old job in counterterrorism, right? And uh, apparently at some point in time, I'd gotten in some water or touched some water or my skin got in contact with water that had a parasite called schistomyosis in it. And basically worms swam through my skin and attached themselves inside my body. They went apparently towards my brain type areas, what they think, because I, I had a lot of issues there I'll get into. Um and uh yeah so for i was going around to doctors literally for like two years uh i had to get a rotator cuff surgery because i couldn't heal correctly that led to a bone marrow infection all while throwing up all, like it was horrendous like it was as bad as it could get and i it was i'll be honest with you, man it was a dark time like i've 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 had rough times in my life but like when you're throwing up 30 50 times a day you don't and there's no end in sight there's not like 
medicine that's helping. There's not like it gets pretty dark. You know what I mean? Like there's you start weighing a lot of things and be like, what is worth this? What's not worth this? And, and anyway, so, so now you're like a what a year of this, two years of this? Oh yeah, at least two three years because it's still going on to this day. Like I threw it probably three times today. Right? That's why my voice is like kind of messed up. Sorry, but three times is nothing. Fifty times is not cool. So I went from two hundred seventy three pounds as a national level competitor and literally dropped down to like two hundred seven within like a month because he just couldn't hold anything. And you can see it on the YouTube channel. Like you just see it like plummet. And I, and I documented the whole thing talking about it and stuff. Anyway, wow. um, I'm at the Arnold, the Arnold sports festival this one year. Yeah. Uh, and I run into my, one of my friends, Mark, Mark Bell, who yep. uh, is a Sacramento powerlifting coach, big in the sport. Uh, I run into him and he's, he's kind of a friend through YouTube and stuff. And I've done his podcast and worked with him. And he was like, Hey man, I've had this doctor friend who works with nothing but like Navy SEALs, Delta, like people who go and do stuff in like dirty places like you, maybe she'll have an idea. So he sends me to her and I have to go to like fifth Avenue, New York. And I am a wilderness bushcraft. I am a lonely nature guy. I'm not like a, (laughs) I don't go into cities very often. You know what I mean? So I'm down to Fifth Avenue and I have to go through this whole process, which if you watch my YouTube channel, I tell a story about the test for the uh, thing, which involved a 10 inch probe. And uh, it was, I'm not even kidding. It was, if you watch the video, you will cry laughing because it's so funny. Um, anyway, it turns out that I had a couple parasites and all that I need to do was take a couple pills that are no problem. And it would clear my system because 240,000 people a year die of this. Um, 240,000 people a year in Africa alone die of this every single year. And so for them, they just take a pill. It's not a big deal. If you look it up on the internet, it's absolutely disgusting. Your wife will love it. Uh, anyway, for but for me, since you don't really see that happen in America very much, no one had any clue what's going on. So it took that long for me to figure it out. And then, then I had to deal with the damage. So then I had to get locked in a hyperbaric chamber every single day like and not like the hyperbaric chamber that you see like michael phelps like do and stuff like it, it's it's literally like a tube that's um kind of like a large larger than a coffin larger than like an mri machine but literally you get locked in and they're like eat 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 like it's a submarine like like a submarine like you're going down right Twenty thousand leaves, down, right like you hit depth and like people freak out and you can't just jump out they can't let you out because they need to depressurize you. Otherwise you get the bends just like scuba diving. Right. Right. So like, if you have like a full blown panic attack because you're locked in this little thing, you got like 10, 12 minutes freaking out. Well, they, they had to bring you up. Anyway, I do that every single day for a couple months and that did tremendous things to heal my body. Like I, I wasn't covered by insurance, so I had to stop doing it. But like, man, if I could do something for healing every single day, it would be hyperbaric chamber. And it, like, it was incredible Um, to give you an idea. My brain I was kind of a reckless child, right? Like I was kind of like a daredevil kid, wasn't afraid of heights, would jump off anything, that that type of child. When And it lasted through my college career, everything. Like I was an idiot, right? Still kind of an idiot. Well, you're we're men, so it's kind of, yeah, there's always yeah. an idiot side <laughs> is, to it. Right? Like it just yeah. happens sometimes. Yeah. But uh, so when I had, was in the depths of that disease, I became afraid of heights. I became like claustrophobic stuff that I'd never really dealt with in my life started showing up in my life. And it was bad. Like I could like, I would struggle climbing up a ladder as opposed to like jumping off like a 40 foot cliff into like a river. You know what I mean? Right. Um, And then as my brain healed with the hyperbaric treatments, I got better and better. And now I'm back to can do as many stupid things as I'd like to do. Like that (laughs) fear has gone away, like all of it. So I'm back to a point now where I can finally start training seriously again and, start looking at uh, my health and like my lifting career is an actual possibility again, because I I'm able to hold on to food. Wow. So, and you have 20 and you have 27 acres that you live on to, to be yes. a stupid on. Yes. That is just pure wilderness. So like literally some of my YouTube channel is me building like a log cabin by hand, tree forts, <laughs> like tree forts, like big survival shelters yeah. and like stuff like that. So it's a mix of like lifting plus that plus, Whatever. Yeah. It sounds like you, do you ever have like a men's retreat on your property to have like guys come out and like live in the outdoors for like a week or 
something it is definitely something that i want to pursue in the future uh as because i'm prepping it, it this property i don't know how much of this i want to get into so no, it's okay. like really, <laughs> it's okay this, this property is really 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 interesting uh like the previous owner was murdered not at the house but uh the place sat vacant for like 10 years so wow. in the middle of the wilderness and if anyone knows like the wilderness will take back over so it's been like me redoing trails, dead trees, just removing. It's It's been, it's a very, so much more work than I ever expected to be yeah. like physical labor work, but it, I love it. I love every second of it. Yeah. Um, but it is part of my plan to like start doing like a retreat. And my wife is actually a therapist. So we've talked about having like couples out. I want to build maybe like one of those cool, like tree houses where like you can have like a two person kind of bedroom suite. Yeah. Where, like, I'm, I'm we're there. Out. My wife, right. my wife and I'll come. I, Wouldn't that be no awesome? More. You tell we'll me be, when this we'll is a person podcast. It'd be terrific. I'm I'm ready. We watch those tree fort shows sometimes. So right. They, right. You, I don't know if you've seen any of these. There's a guy, there's literally a tree fort television show where right. this guy travels around the world to see different types of homes and fortresses built in in the trees and it's and with absolutely sky bridges, stunning yeah like ewoks and stuff unbelievable like stuff i know full, full out homes like I know. up in a tree like with plumbing <laughs> and uh, like a elevator system and all uh, yep. unbelievable incredible right yeah so, i don't know what it's gonna hold i don't know what the future is gonna hold i mean <laughs> we both know that the internet isn't forever and right. i mean it's it's very much a Popular, it, I mean, how easily you can get in trouble or how easily like you can just become unpopular because you got too old or you got too fat or you got too no, you're right. fill in the blank that the Internet wanted to be mad at you about. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know what it's going to hold, but I definitely want to use whatever influence I have to like really change people's lives. Because I guess I should probably tell you how I know Joe, right? So, like, Joe oh, Miller. yeah. Yeah. So uh, Joe Miller, she she's you've obviously worked with her and you know, Joe. Um, so randomly, uh, Joe stumbled upon, and I could, I could be actually wrong about this. Joe might need to confirm all this, but I believe that she stumbled upon my YouTube channel and came and visited the gym and met my wife and she and my wife hit it off. And, uh, she came and worked out at my gym. My gym is very much about making the impossible possible because we don't, we work with literally, we have world champion athletes at the gym and we also have people who can't lift a 10 pound medicine ball. We have literally people like Smiles Taylor who has cerebral palsy. We've had guys without legs, guys without arms, guys without everything. And like, the thing is like, when you walk through the, the doors of the gym, you're not special, whatever is going on. Like we only care about your attitude and your effort and everyone there's there to support each other. No one's mean whatsoever, but like everyone's there is only interested in seeing what you are not currently capable of doing. Mm. Everyone wants to see what you're going to be able to do. You know what I mean? Whether you're injured and coming back, whatever, or even no matter what the case may be, like the idea of my gym, my gym's name is Never Sate and Never Sate Athletics. And it's like never satiated. The idea that like uh, constant and never ending improvement. If you can't do it physically, then you're doing it mentally. If you can't do it mentally, doing it emotionally. If you're not working emotionally, you're doing it spiritually, but you're always trying to get a little bit better. And it just so happens to be that like something physical with Joe, like when Joe walked into my facility and we started mm -hmm. working, it's a really, really easy way to get little wins when you go to the gym or you do some sort of fitness, right? Cause you get one more rep or five more pounds on the bar or a PR, or you showed up four times this week. Like that's a win. Like you ate good, whatever it might be. Like it's easy to, to get little accountable tick marks where you're like, I got a little sticker. I did a good job. And you get these little wins and they build up and they build up and you build yeah. habits and it changes lives. Right. And um, when Joe moved, when Joe came into our facility, I know she wasn't in a super, super terrific place. And I think it was just a lot of her seeing people. It was impossible not show up and work hard because there was someone there without legs. And you were like, well, I am too blessed not to squat how much I don't want to squat today. That guy doesn't have legs. I bet he'd like to squat. So I guess I'm going to squat. You know what I mean? It was a lot of that. And then just people making small wins. And then I found out that Joe actually was working at the time with one of my best friends in the world. Um, he uh, he ran the fitness department at the gym that she was coaching at. And uh, it was just, it was like serendipitous of like, wow, we're all kind of in this together and stuff. And 
uh, she is just one of the biggest sweethearts in the world as you, yeah. you obviously know. And oh yeah, literally she started training strongman. And the beautiful thing about strongman, even something like sandbags, uh, just doing some sort of training with something other than like a barbell is that like, when you go to pick up a box of books, right. You don't go up and set up like you're going to do a sumo deadlift or it, it doesn't mimic a barbell, right? Like, but if you pick up a sandbag or an Atlas stone or a keg or a lot of strongman implements, it mimics real life things, right? So for a lot of people, not saying this was Joe, but for a lot of people, learning strongman movements or even training with sandbags, something like that, built a whole different level of capability and confidence because now like you don't need to ask for help to put the 80 pound bag of dog food into the cart. Like you don't need to ask for help if you want to get that box of whatever Christmas ornaments out of the attic. Like you have abilities that you didn't have before. And um, I think seeing people have that that moment plus people not having like legs and still getting over it and like everyone who walks in the door has some sort of problem everyone is too old too young too skinny too big too this too that and uh we all just kind of came together and i think joe just fit perfectly in that group and man uh it, it's been terrific terrific knowing her yeah yeah she is she's a uh she's really something uh we we somehow connected i forget how to be honest with you oh no i remember how we had put out on our social channels that we were looking for a content contributor for us somebody to help uh write uh video descriptions and just help us on on some of our social channels namely youtube and she had reached out i think through like a facebook post that she was interested or or emailed me got my email through facebook and emailed me this amazing story that's what it was <laughs> yeah. testimonial and stuff yes. and i read it and i said well i'm not looking at anybody else's right like our search is over <laughs> she's got a story <laughs> yeah she has one hell of a story and I, i'm a younger a youngest of three boys my older brothers are identical twins so oh. there was an instant connection with that and my one of my brothers dave passed away from a brain tumor so her and her struggle with, with losing her identical twin. And I mean, I was like, well, I, I want it, like, I want yeah. this girl to like move to Florida so I can like, so we can be buddies, you know, cause we just instant connections. And, um, and again, she obviously raved about you and, and, and how transformative it was to be connected to you. And, and it was like, it just she just kind of took off and that like i said earlier that fire was restored inside of her and she started you know she was really good at powerlifting for her size you know a little mighty she's a little over 100 pounds oh, just a spark plug and then you know she was able to kind of take that same enthusiasm and passion for excellence and and get into strongman competition and i think it was very uh, healing for her um and then. within 6 months became Marilyn Strong's woman like right. for her weight class, like within right. like six months, it was like within a year of training with me, she was Marilyn Strong's woman at her weight class. I it, I think it might've been like six months. Now, granted, like she was an awesome power lifter. So she came in, right. works hard, does everything right. So like, right. it wasn't my coaching. She just, she just transitioned. Right. But like, right. man, she, I mean, it was, it was like watching a, a fish in water, you know what I mean? Like it just, it just switched right over and it just absolutely incredible. She's incredible. I encourage anybody go back, listen to some podcasts from uh, earlier last year with Joe Miller. Look for her name, multiple podcasts with her hosting and guesting. And uh, was this pre or post double mastectomy that she had? Because that she had a whole story there where she did a, uh, a double mastectomy as a preventative because of what happened to her sister. And her other yes. sister also had one. I think all yes. three girls ended up with double mastectomies. I've never seen a person, you know how like most people like get like a health scare or something and they like might change for like this amount of time and then kind of, I've never seen someone take it so seriously. Like her dedication, her and her husband, Matt, if you've ever met yeah. Matt, Matt's, a, yeah. Matt's an awesome yeah, individual I have. as well. And uh, I mean, both of them just, they're locked in to do whatever they need to do to make it as good as possible. Now they have a brand new baby. So I can only imagine that baby's going to be like That's a superhero. I'm sure it's already has, it's a set of dumbbells or something. 
<laughs> yeah, that kid has no choice. That kid's going to be automatically awesome because the parents, there's so much love and um, a, a bond there that's remarkable <laughs> and and just so, so much passion and enthusiasm for, for life. Um, truly inspirational people. So yeah, I uh, can't say enough about her. Your story obviously is is remarkable as well. Um, your journey has been crazy, and I know there's there's so many different ways we could go and questions that I that I have. Um, one question: brain, you have brain tumor. Is this something yeah. that you're living with forever because it's inoperable, or what, what? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, I guess this is scary to somebody who's had experience with brain tumor because when I heard it, man, when the doctor called him was like, "Hey, you have brain tumor," there was like cold water down my back. Like, Oh no, that that's a terrible thing. But a lot of people have brain tumors. Um, and somebody like mine, I have a pituitary microadenoma. Um, it's about the size of a pea and it is on my pituitary gland. So throughout my life, it has excreted, uh, different types of hormones and stuff, which sometimes helped me sometimes really hurt me. Right. So there were times in my life when it seemed like I was almost like hormonally just having problems one way or the other, right? Like in a lot, it just had to do with like something being on top of my, my pituitary gland. Right. Uh, anyway, it's in a position where they're not going to do operation on it unless it continues to grow. And so I still have to get MRIs and stuff to see if my peripheral vision is closing in because that's one of the signs like that's growing on your pituitary. It'll start closing that off. And if it does, then they'll be willing to do the surgery. But right now in order to do it, they had to like go in through my nose and like button hooking, like, it sounds pretty bad and the insurance company is like, until it gets worse, let's just ride it out. Right. Wow. So I'm not in like danger. It, it hasn't seemed to really do much uh, for the past couple of years. So thank God for that. You know what I mean? But how often yeah, are so. you going to get, you do annual tests? Six months. Every six months. Yeah. They like to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, crazy. My, it is crazy. My, yeah, my brother had a, um, some type of, I don't know, glioma or whatever, you know, whatever the, one of these like octopus type tumors sure. that was in his temporal lobe. Um, forget which side. I think it was on his right, the right side. And um, didn't know he had it, had a massive seizure, found out he had it, had one of the top brain surgeons in the country perform at Yale New Haven hospital in Connecticut perform a, a procedure to remove as much of it as they possibly could. And then he did regular tests and, and, and therapies, chemo and radiation and stuff. And it was in check for a long time. And he was, he got married and love of his life and uh, had a, had a good life going and uh, was really well loved as a mental health worker for uh young young people at a psychiatric hospital and then um it got the best of them and the treatments just and it was inoperable at that point and so he had a a year of not the best quality of life with my mom moved herself into their house to help take care of her son dying of a brain cancer and um that was tough man that was 10 years ago um 10 years not a long time man yeah, a long time. It's it's awful, but it's nice to know that there are people that can endure and can deal with things. And like yourself, or I mean, again, it hasn't obviously impacted your ability to be strong and active and have an amazing quality of life as long as you're kind of continuing to mon monitor it and make sure that you know you're all right. Yeah, it, it's crazy though. Like um, when you really start talking to people, especially like if you get past like the standard whatever conversations yeah. it's amazing how many people have these like tragic things in their life yeah and it's like how many people can relate on so many different ways and mm -hmm. we're all just going through stuff like we need to be yes. nicer to each other man dude i couldn't agree more i'm so glad you said that brian because uh yeah we're all stuck in like superficial conversations with most people in day-to-day -day life and I think if we have more of these deeper con that's part of the reason why we love this podcast is because I can have meaningful conversation with people that really impacts me, you, people listening. And it it goes like several layers deeper and it 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 it's it means something. It's evergreen, it's truth, it's 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 powerful, it's motivational, it's inspirational, it's all these things, it's transformative. And I just I I, I love it. And I I think 
Um, there's a guy right now, super popular. I think he was a Navy SEAL, that Goggins guy. That's mm -hmm. I, I don't, you've probably seen yep. him before. David Goggins, he's yep. Really outspoken. Yeah. A lot of his stuff's actually pretty vulgar because he's <laughs> he's a lot of dropping f bombs, stuff that we don't typically do. But his messages are are pretty good yeah. because he's talking he's come, talking from a, a a place of like empowerment and 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 being strong and being taking action in your life and stuff, but. A message that he had put out, I don't know how old this message is because uh, maybe when I caught it, it had already been circulating for years or something. But he was saying something to the effect of everybody's got stuff that they're dealing with. Yep. Fill in your own word there. <laughs> Everyone. So when people say, like, you don't know what I'm dealing with, he said, that's baloney. That's bull crap because yep. all of us have struggle. All of us are dealing with crap and all of us can relate and like understand where someone else is going through trials and tribulations because we all are doing it. We all have it. And then all it takes is you hear someone else's story like a Joe Miller and it makes you feel like, wow, I, I'm lucky. I pulled the the, the lucky straw, man, because yep. I didn't have to deal with that. Yep. A thousand percent. And, you know, I think about the times when like, like I'd like to consider myself a pretty thoughtful and nice guy. You like, I think most of us try to think of ourselves like that. And I think about times when like I'm mean or short or like don't want to do things. And a lot of times it's because it has nothing to do with the person or the situation. It's because of something else that's going on back here that I can't let go. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And uh, I think so many people are going through that. And if we could just have the generosity, the generosity in a different term of like, Hey, you know what? I bet they're going through something else and this has nothing to do with me. Exactly so I'm just right. going to go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt and not choose. I'm it's a different battle. I'll choose a different battle today. I don't need to get into that one, you know? Yep. And uh, I'm trying, uh, and this is a lot easier to do the older I get, you know what right. I mean? Cause these dogs, Man, if I told my 20-year-old self that, I'd be like, that guy's an idiot. Don't listen to him, <laughs> you know? No. But the older I get, like, it's true, man. Like, everyone's going through stuff. Like, it doesn't matter how old, young, your color, your anything. Everyone's going through something. And, like, if we all just came into the relationship of that moment and been like, hey, you know what? If you're mean, it's probably not because of my face. I, it, You know what I mean? There's probably right. – you're probably so unhappy or there's something going on, like – I, I try to, I'm trying to look at people more like that. And it's yeah. hopefully making me a better person somehow. You know I, what I mean? I, th I think it is absolutely trying to see something from someone else, someone else's perspective and realize don't take things so personally. Um, I've had a habit in my life. I just turned 47, you know, we're roughly the same age. We have a lot of life experience behind us now, and it's really easy to start to see things more clearly like gosh if when i was 26 had i just handled that moment you know like i i would today like and we can't but we can learn from it and yeah. I, I think that's the whole thing is like allowing yourself to learn and to to remember and then to share that wisdom with people whether they're going to listen or not like you're right our 20 year old selves would be like dude i already know everything i right. remember <laughs> I remember having a conversation with a guy I was friendly with. He was about five years older than me. And he was like, you really think you know like a lot or know everything, huh? And I'm like, I, I do. I have a lot of life experience at 20. I got this figured out. <laughs> I got this stuff figured out. And there's some truth in that because I had gone through a lot as a 20 sure. year old, but not to the point where like I, I, I couldn't, now there was nothing left for me to learn. It's like, once you think <laughs> that you're, you're, you're done. done, you're toast. Yeah. As we get older, we learn how much we don't know and how much we do need to learn. And and I think as we get older, that only and that's called I think that's the start of wisdom uh, on, on some level. But I, I really love that message. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. I, one other question I have, were you and we don't have to go deep on this at all. But my question is, were you in the military or you just somehow got into government work? OK, I well, uh it's a story for a different time. I've told it on my yeah. channel a couple of times, but um, I was on a plane because my wife's family was in England because her dad was working for the government, different agency entirely at the time. And I was over there for Christmas, just visiting, came back on a plane, an incident happened on a plane. I reacted, landed. We had to divert to a different airport. That started conversations with people. And literally a week later, I was 
doing a PT test for the government and not, wow. I, it sounds like a stupid Thanks. movie and no one ever believes it. Right. But right. I have proof for all of this. Right. Like, right. and then literally like week, week, two weeks later, I was gone for like six months doing different classes and different wow. interesting like academies. Yeah. Well, and I, I guess it's not unheard of for the government to hire, to bring on a civil, a civilian that goes through some type I mean, of special specialized training to perform certain tasks. I, I, that makes sense to me. Virtually everyone that I worked with was either a civilian that had some sort of like skill to be there, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't like anybody, but you had a reason to be there or you're prior military or you're prior, like decent cop. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, wow. And those things are what they did. And then they train you the way they want to train you. So it's like you bring to the table what you have, but they train you up and then you wow. went from there, you know? How interesting. Yeah. They, so you're, they saw the the raw material response on, on a flight and they were like, yep, that's what we want. And so uh, let's get this guy going. Honestly, that's straight up what they were like. Yep. You, the, the will to actually do something in that situation, we can tell you what to do, but like whether people will freeze up or not freeze up. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's an interesting thing that training can work as well as like, Training your sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, yeah. your fight or flight, and like trying to like get deeper into like your tolerances for different types of stresses and stuff like that. Like it's also awesome my like training can even involve in that. Wow. So you're still dealing. We'll go back to. I'm sure everybody's still their head spinning from the uh, the monsters inside me. Yeah, stuff, you know, because you're like, okay, so you still have this condition, but you're down to the point where it's much more manageable. You're having to like vomit or have a response to this yeah. only a few times a day now. So it's much more manageable. You're obviously able to put lots of muscle back on and get back heavy duty into your training. So you, you just overall f- are feeling like kind of better cognitively, physically, everything's kind of on the up and up. And, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, once I took those pills, I did not have the worms anymore. Right. Wow. Uh, but had, they could have been sitting in there for a decade. We don't know how long they were there. Wow. So whatever damage they did is just taking time to heal. And as you know, anyone who's had traumatic brain injury or anything like that, which I had some of that from my stupidity in the past, uh, it takes a long time for the brain to heal. You know what I mean? It could take literally decades for you to get completely back to where you were. And uh, as it comes back, literally, it's like my body comes back and brain come back. It, it all comes back together as it. it's really just been a whole kind of encompassing thing. Wow. Yeah. That's such a cool thing that you were able to kind of carry the torch and, <laughs> uh, for your friend, Matt Jenkins. Um, you know, something that was that you were never doing. And then you wanted to do something to honor him. And that just catapulted you into this whole world, which you became an expert in and, and like, you know, transcended the whole thing and like helping people. And uh, it, that's really, really remarkable. It just shows you the type of human being you are to be able to. And I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of people that probably reached out to you that were, you know, who were in his network that were really uh, taken by that. Um Uh, and it's been a crazy ride man i'm sure it sounds like it i mean like i i mean if you would have told me that i was ever going to like i am not a sit in front of a camera person that is not my thing i'm a super introvert like i said i live on 27 acres of wilderness in the middle of it so i can be away from people (laughs) right not because i don't like people but because i'm like just more comfortable alone you know and uh so it if you would have told me a decade ago that I would be a YouTube guy and coaching and doing stuff like the Arnold with like Brian Shaw and like all these crazy individuals. And I'm like, there is no way, like, I don't even want to do that. That is not on my radar whatsoever. I'm not interested in that. And here I am. (laughs) And here you are. It's just crazy where you end up, end up being. And now I'm, I'm like figuring out my next steps. I'm considering going back to grad school for like mental health stuff. So I can go into therapy because I think about all the things I've been through, through my life. And I'm like, I could probably talk to a lot of people. There's not a lot of like strong masculine therapists in my area. Um, and I, man, that sounds really mean. I didn't mean that like in a mean way. I'm just saying. I know what you mean. Uh, I hear therapists you. and masculinity isn't like what you'd see on a sitcom, right? The, the, like it's the, not what you think of. The need for for men in the world like you, like what 
we're trying to do here at Strong by Design and some of the other people I've connected with recently, like a Travis Stetzel. I don't know if you've ever heard of Tra- Forge Father, Travis Stetzel. He's a beast like you. He's had the same. I, I love these conversations because we need this message and this truth and this way of life to be more uh, discussed and more uh, talked about and shared because so much of what's out there, you're not missing much, my friend, living on your 27 acres because there's a lot of garbage uh, in the world today and a lot of uh, lies and stuff that just makes you sick that you don't even, that you can't even believe that if someone told anyone 20 years ago, they wouldn't even believe what they're hearing, like, what, really? 2023? That's what they're going to be spreading right. as, like, truth? Right. So, I, I, no, I, I love I love talking about this and impacting people. And uh, to, to You know, that's also a very fortunate thing that a lot of people I don't think realize that they have. Like, if I would have had my lifting channel, like what I've, I've provided, if I had that when I was 16, mm. complete game changer, right? Because, like, when we were coming up lifting – there was like one big dude in the gym that you like, you went up to and you're like, Hey man, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I bench a lot and I do curls. That's what I do. Like, you know what I mean? Like they didn't know what they were doing. And like, now there's so much information and even like conversations like this, where like, uh, like you think about like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was in his prime, like he wasn't allowed to show any sort of weakness or like emotion. It was like, I am a robot because I want to, you know, like right. that's what people expected a strong person to be. And now like, I think it's cool that, like, people can hear this conversation and be like, sure, he's got muscles. Sure, he does, like, whatever stuff. But, like, he's a normal person. Like, he's gone through some stuff. He hurts. Like, he's going to cry when his dog dies. Like, right. like, he, like those are important for people to realize so that when they go through those emotions, they're not, like, that negative self-talk of, like, wow, I suck. I'm so terrible because I'm not this tough image or whatever people are telling me I'm supposed yep. to be. Yep. And it's, like, it's so cool that, like, people can listen to whoever they're influenced by and can be like, wow, that's a real person, right? Like that's a genuine person who goes through stuff, who puts on their pants one leg at a time, just like me, but they figure it out, which means I can figure it out. And that's like, right. man, that's so huge because we didn't have that. Like nope. you didn't have mentors, right? Like if you had like a older brother or like a, like if you went to a church or you were part of some sort of group, you might've had like one or two mentors, but you were still kind of like, probably not the guy that I would have chosen, right? Like that's what I got. That's what I'm stuck with. It's not like, you're looking at someone like David Goggins, who has done like this incredible stuff. And you're like, what do you have to say about life? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. there's this awesome opportunity to like, just become an awesome individual just by what you can take in. But most of the time, that's not really what we choose to take in. Right? No. I, 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 and I think something. the vulnerable, the vulnerability is, is what makes people far more attractive to learning from and to following is that they're letting you see their failures and their defeats but yet how they overcame that and we're all not perfect not even close um we're all going through stuff we're all struggling we've all hit dead ends in life lost people um lost relationships you know all kinds of things and yet there's still so much we all have to offer each other um and um again no i mean that's I applaud like what you're doing and the more open and real that we can be, I, I, I think that's just that that much more inspiring and helpful to to the people on the other side. Um, I, I make, I, I never claim, of course, you know, I'll sometimes in past podcasts, you know, we, I think we had an episode where we were talking about like, uh, you know, are you living a virtual or virtuous life? It's like we share our best moments on social yeah. media, but not our worst ones. Right. right. We share the smiles and the good times sure. and look at me and the positivity and how amazing is my life. But what about those dark moments? We're not, are we sharing those? Right. Um, and some people to, to a crazy extent where it's multiple times a day where it's like, geez, you look like you have a fairy tale life, but no one does. No. Um, so the more authentic that we can be and the more real that's why again these conversations are so great because you can really go deep and, and and people really feel like they know you yeah because it's like I, I there's no facade here for you for me like we're just two guys that are, have an opportunity to get to know each other and really find like a connection and like man i want to go hang out with this guy you know i want to go 
hang out on his 27 acres in a tree house <laughs> with my wife and like split wood. Like, yeah. I, I, I grew up cutting, stacking wood with my dad and my brothers. Like I love that, man. Stuff. Yeah. And there's um, magic in that. It's nothing. I mean, it's, it's like an honorable life, you know, like work, work. It's cool. That, like you can get real genuine connection though. You know what I mean? Because like, if you're willing to take down that wall just for a second, I know the 20 year old me right now, I'd be like, man, shut pussy, up. Like, pussy. That, yeah. A hundred percent. Would be say, right. You're pussy. But like, if I could go back and tell myself that I'm like, you know how much better of a man you would be today <laughs> You could have figured this out 20 years ago, or you had someone that you respected that told you 20 years ago, like, stop being an idiot. Do this. Like, your all your relationships are going to go better. You're going to be close with your dad. You're going to be close with your friends. You're like, all these things. And, like, you and I just sitting here being willing to take down that wall a little bit without being afraid of what people are going to think. That's right. Like, we're able to connect. And, like, just like you said, I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever shake your hand in real life, but I'd like to. Like, right. unless you're really good at faking it. I'm like, I feel like you're a pretty good guy, yeah. right? And that's allowed to come over with everyone else because it's really like other people sitting in this room with us. That's and right. you get a real feel because you can only fake things for so long. You know what I mean? And like, there's, there's so, only so long where you don't people have, over it. Yeah, people have gotten used to it. Seeing a lot of the the fake talk and the, and 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 the messaging that's out there, and you know, look, look at me, look at me, I'm perfect, I'm perfect, and. I, I think we need more of the, I'm not perfect. Here's why I, I goofed up. Here's why I really messed up. Don't right. do this. Avoid this. Here was a win. And, and just kind of showing people in, in, in a much more um, realistic w- human way. Uh, Cause the, the path is never straight, right? There's lots of, of, of peaks and valleys. And uh, I think the more, open we are about those the the more helpful we are uh to to everyone listening so i love that you had said now your gym now is only open to people that are grandfathered in you you're not necessarily a public gym anymore meaning you're not taking in on any new people is that right that is that is correct um so when covid hit right uh, and gyms had to get started shut down and stuff like that we closed it down and uh, the people, <laughs> the dog wants in, man. The people, the people who uh, were grandfathered in, who have been basically family, because it really is like family there, you know. Yeah. And so the people that like we trust, they got the keys. The people who you know who hadn't been there yet, or were like, I'm going to wait till next week, or I'm going to wait till next week. Like, I'm sorry, you kind of missed the chance because it's it's an unstaffed gym currently. Yep. People just walk in. They don't pay. They go and they they train. They clean it up themselves and they they go back out. You know what wow. I mean? And uh, it's a cool opportunity because I can still go there and train and see people and stuff like that. But I also don't need to have that like ball and chain of like, oh, I need to be there to coach class Saturday morning yeah. instead of like go do whatever else I was going to do. You know? So wow. it's cool. I do miss the the physical coaching, like the the intensity and the fun of like seeing people hit things. And I still get that a little bit, but I miss the like regular thing of that. But at the same time, being able to be online and like write eBooks and programs and stuff like that, like the number of people that I can influence in there is so much larger than I could just with like Maryland, you know what I mean? So um, that's kind of where I am right now. And then, like I said, I think really YouTube will probably be about a decade long, maybe a little bit longer type of ride for me. And then I'll probably start kind of going back in and like I said, move into something else. It's just kind of how I've been my whole life. You know what I mean? Right. Well, no, yeah. You got to move where you feel led or pulled, you know, and it's not always, it's not always the same and maybe every decade, you know, or so that looks a little bit different, but you're enjoying what you're doing right now, obviously. And you're impacting more people than you could in just the, the brick and mortar, you know, area that you're in. And so that's cool. And that's what we ended up doing, right? You know, or what I ended up doing when I took a position with Critical Bench 10 years ago, I went from face to face impacting lives on a daily, seeing my clients, people from 30 to 80 years old and seeing how my work with them was benefiting them in real time. And I loved it and it was great, but I did it for 15 plus years. And it's now I can help thousands of people, tens of thousands through the work that we do now this way. And that's, that's really gratifying in its own right. You just don't feel the, um, you don't get the feedback as much. Right. But you also couldn't do the online job well, 
yes, if sir. you didn't have that 15 years yes, of sir. like banging your head against the yes. wall with with like not to be mean, but basically like using people's like test dummies and being like, I don't know what's too far. It's 2002. No one knows how far to go. Let's right. see. You know what I mean? Right. Like there was a lot of that when you were when you were coming through. You're doing oh, it to yeah. yourself. You're doing it to your clients. Yeah. Figuring out what worked, what didn't work. Trying different programs. And all of that trial and error and messing those things up and learning how to be like, look, I'm sorry. I'm that that bad's on me. Like I know. learning how to do that set both of us up for like an online career where like if someone calls you and they're like, hey man, I have a problem with this, you can automatically reference 30 different people, clients in your past where you're like, okay, they all had the same problem. Here's a checklist for you to start knocking out. You know what I mean? Yep. And unless you had that real life experience. Like, I think a lot of people coming out like 20 years old being like, all right, I've got like 170 online clients. I'm like, oh, child, like you you don't know how much pain and damage you're doing right now. Like you need to be able to watch the pain in somebody's eyes and be like, I'm going too far. That's too far. I need to stop. Or like, wow, I really thought that was going to be harder than it was. Like you don't <laughs> you don't even know until, until you've seen it and like real people, you know, no. and um I'm so thankful that I had that time. I am. I'm so thankful I could do what I do now. But yeah, man, it it was an important learning thing, and I apologize to all my clients over the years. I know, I know, right? I issue Current a formal too, apology to everyone. I, you know, screwed up or I had a bad day. Uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't the best coach that day or trainer. <laughs> but there were so many rewarding moments and experiences, and, were. and people's lives were oh. changed. My life was changed by working with them. The accountability, the um, the progression, the uh, just the, that relationship that you end up, that connection that you have with people for a period of years. Some people have passed away. I mean, I'm, there's been several people that I've worked with that are no longer alive that because they were older, they were in their 70s or 80s. But I helped make those last five or 10 years of their life better from yep. a physical perspective. And they were able to be more independent and, and confident. And uh, I mean, it makes, it's gratifying. If it, it feels, it feels good. There's a great amount of pride that, that comes with that. And um, so, I mean, we, we do good things, man. We help people, we help people move in the world and become a, a, like action takers, you know, cause uh, f physical activity, we have a whole program that's about, uh, neuro, it's about you know, balance, impacting balance, simple exercise impact, but it's really about impacting our brain, but our yeah. brains mostly impact through physical activity and movement. And the two are just so intertwined. So it's so, so neat. I, I don't get me going. Cause that'd be a whole nother hour conversation about that. Um, <laughs> I'm with honestly, you, man. I'm but, with you. Yeah. It's, it's huge, huge cognitive effect from like, you're an outdoorsman. You love physical labor, working with your hands and that, if you don't, I'm sure if you just like go a day, you don't feel quite right. It's like, I got to get out. I got to walk my dogs. I got to be on my property. I got to cut this down or tear this down or build this. And it's like, that's what fills you up. And, you know, and it's, it's amazing. I, okay. Before we get to uh, places for uh, people to connect with you, sure. watch your content and get to know you better. I have some fire questions for you. Right, like yeah. kind of like rapid fire, don't really sure. require much uh, effort in answering. Yep. Your favorite manly movie all time. Bloodsport. You already said it, Bloodsport. Well, okay, Bloodsport. Gosh, I mean, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even you, know you what I was. You had that uh, from, the, from the jump. That's great. <laughs> uh, that was accidental and not and not at all planned, by the way. Uh, book. Favorite book all time. Any, it could be about anything. The Fountainhead. The Fountainhead. Okay. By Another book I'll have to read. I don't know it, but it sounds interesting. It's a long book. Okay. <laughs> Just like a thousand, prepared. like a thousand pages or something? Yeah, it's like it's like Stephen King times two type of like it type of Stephen King type of thing. It's is a, it fiction or nonfiction? It's fiction, but it's uh it's like philosophy put into like a fictional type of character cool. situation. You know All right. I mean? I'll check it out. PRs, what's your your uh, in, uh, recollection? What's your best all time? It could be competition or pr or 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 not. Sure. Bench, squat, deadlift. What are your best numbers? Bench is five hundred five. Squat is seven fifty five. Seven fifty, and then deadlift I believe is like seven thirty five to seven fifty somewhere in there. Wow, good. 
Wow, pretty awesome. So you've had like you you did powerlifting meets? Did you I've never done one? Never did. Okay, so you never had a, a a true meet total or anything like that. But if you did, you would have had you would have been totaling a nineteen hundred to two to almost two thousand pounds. Yeah, I did one bench competition and uh, I did it in flip flops, like spur of the moment. And uh, they got mad at me because they didn't have the proper stuff. And I was like, I don't know if this sport's for me. And then that was literally at the gym where Mike was like, you need to do strong, man. I'm like, there's too many rules of these strength sports. We need to go punch each other. Right. Uh, but here I am now. You That's know? great. I love yeah. it. Who's who's like, I mean, again, don't think long and hard. Who's like one of the coolest people you've ever met? through this industry in this industry that's a good question i you know i'd probably say brian shaw okay uh and again if i thought long and hard i i definitely there's some people that i've gotten very close to that i'd probably give a better answer to but i'm saying as far as like like i've met arnold i've met like some of the big like titans thor bjornson like I've, i've met these guys and i'll say like out of everyone that i've met the dude that I'd want to be like, like I, I slept in Brian Shaw's basement. And like when he was going to bed, when he walked across the floor to go to oh bed, it sounded like a horror movie. Like it was like dust falling from the- <laughs> it was like, like a Sasquatch. Like it was terrifying. Right. Uh, Cause the dude was at the time, he was like 450 pounds, like it's six under- foot eight or something. Um, but seriously, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And uh, wow. so uh, I I've, I've spent a decent amount of time with him, stayed at his house and stuff like that. And, I'd say like out of everyone, he's the guy where you're like, hey, is everyone like how they are? Brian's how he is. Wow. Right? Like, like how you're like, he just seems like a good guy. Like he can't even be mean. Like even when he tries to be mean, he's not yeah. mean. That's yeah. Brian. You wow, know that's I mean? awesome. Just, yeah. We've guy. taken a lot of photos with him uh, when we've sent like photographer reporters to uh, Arnold's or Olympia's and stuff, obviously Arnold's and and with Brian, uh, we've had a lot of photos of him over the years. I've never met him, but uh, seen, seen him in a lot of our pictures. So ridiculously large. There's, there's ones of me and him like in videos and stuff and we'll be doing like the bro hug handshake. Yeah. And literally I, it looks like I'm like, Hey dad. Yes. Like, I, <laughs> At like 250 pounds, I look like a little child. Like it's incredible. Like it, Un- it, it, like the first time I met him uh, was going to Olympia, and we were at the Hilton at the uh, at the main the connected thing, and uh, I knock on his door, and he opens the door, and literally like like a cartoon like leans out. He's like, <laughs> "Hi, I'm Brian." I'm like, "Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> yeah, you are." <laughs> You're it's, a house. It's funny. Like he's just, he's, it's a different level human being. He's just so big. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Him and Shaq need to like make a show together or something, right? Seriously. That'd be yeah. perfect. I, I mean, huge, huge people. Like literally, I mean, also uh, I learned seeing him at, at his first Arnold that, that I went to with him. I, I thought I knew how to prepare for like a show. I thought I knew how to prepare for like different things. And the amount of preparation that he was doing as world champion at the time, this was before he had children too, uh, was so ridiculous, regimented and strict, like to the minute on food, water intake, everything was so set up. Like it was incredible. And I saw that and I was like, I've never really prepared for anything in my life. I thought I'd prepare for something, but like the level of professionalism that this man takes to his trade is wow. why he's the best in the world. You know what I mean? And uh, it really showed me that if I want to do something, like there shouldn't be what I consider full effort and what is true full effort, mm-hmm. like can often be two different things. And yeah. he was another individual that taught me that. And I mean, it, it was it was really cool to see. When you start seeing like an upper echelon of people that are like, whether they're sports or yeah. whatever the case may be, like people who are kind of like military, like, Navy, like they all kind of act differently. And most of it comes down to preparation mm-hmm. and paying attention to details. That's right. You know I mean? Well, you look at the, well, you look at the best of the best, the Jerry Rice's, yep. the Kobe Bryant's, Michael Jordan's. Yep. There's a reason why they were better because they got more sleep than you. They yep. ate better than you. They got yep. up earlier than you. They stayed later than you. Yep. They, 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 they outworked you. Yep. From start to finish. And and they also had more talent. Yep. 
Yeah. It's they like had more talent and them. they weren't a prima donna about it. They were on top of the talent, you know? And that's wow. uh, one of my best friends in the world, Nikolai Myers, just became a world champion in strongman. And uh, he was one of the coaches at, at our gym. And I mean, same thing with him, watching him go from like local competitions to winning nationals to becoming a world champion, like the level of preparation that happened was just incredible how much more to, it was literally like high school football to college football to NFL football. Like it was just those huge jumps of like, it's not a game anymore. Now it's your whole life is wow. this, right. you know what I mean? Like you were preparing for that day. I love it. Yeah. I knew, I knew that was going to be a loaded question. So I'm sorry, but I, I love, <laughs> I love, I love the answer. Final question. What's your favorite thing to do with your dogs? Wrestle, I think. Rhodesian Ridgebacks were bred to uh, fight lions. So they fight, they wrestle almost like cats, like they bat and jump and it's intense. And it looks like they're going to go blind all the time because how much they hit each other in the face. But I like to get on the ground with them on like all fours and they jump on me and, and go. And uh, so definitely, definitely that. I don't, uh, living on the property, we always run into things like they're chasing deer or something the other day. Uh, I actually, I don't know if you saw her come in, but Nala is on my left now. Kona is on my right. He's a boy. She's a girl. And Nala got in a fight with a six point buck uh, on my dad's birthday, I guess a month ago. And like the buck had its horns and was like throwing. Her. Oh my <laughs> and, God. Like, thank God they didn't pierce through her belly. She was all cut up and stuff, but like stuff like that will happen. Like literally like every other month, there's some ridiculous story where I'm like, no, one's going to believe this. So I don't even, <laughs> even bother telling it. Oh my God. But, yeah. Like stuff like that all the time. So oh. they're super intense dogs and they, they're just super playful, but yeah. That's awesome, dude. I love <laughs> yeah. it, man. My dog scrapped with a six point buck and survived, you know? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. She had a raccoon hanging off her face. A raccoon bit through her lip and she was like shaking. Like that was like literally like a year ago. Like it's just, it, I mean, when you live in the wilderness, you deal with the wilderness, like well, coyotes, the wilderness. That's foxes, awesome. deer, you know what I mean? Like based stuff. Wow. Yeah. It's so cool, man. I love it. Yeah. So, all right. Where, where should people go if they're on YouTube? What should they be looking for? And anything else that uh, you are would like to share? Sure. Well, if you want to, if you want to know anything about me, just search my name, Brian Alsru, A L S R U H E. That's my Instagram. That's my YouTube. Uh, I'm mainly known for my YouTube channel and my lifting videos that have to do with like the squat, the bench, deadlift, overhead press, and strongman movements. Um, and then also teaching like real functional strength, not like balancing on a BOSU ball type of functional strength. But like, like we talked earlier about like how to pick up a sandbag so that you can pick up a box of books or carrying your groceries or do things that, that help with your real normal life. Like I, I just, I do a lot of things like that, but if there's one thing that I would ask anyone who's interested at all about being inspired by the human spirit, uh, go to my YouTube channel and on the homepage, there is a, video called suffer beautifully. That's like a term that I, I came up with through my vomiting thing. You know what I mean? Everyone suffers, but you have a choice in how you do it. Right. Right. And uh, so if you watch the video suffer beautifully, you'll see a lot of these individuals I've talked about guys without arms, guys without their legs, guys with CP doing Atlas stones, as well as just like normal everyday people, whether it be like a soccer mom or just your average Joe doing incredible things for them. It doesn't, they're not Brian Shaw. They're not, all world champions. Some of them are, you'll see some world champions in that video, but then there's also people who like are just pushing past any limit than they ever thought they get to. And I literally got goosebumps because like, that's why I do it. Right. Like seeing people like do those things. So if you would just go watch that video, it'll take you like three minutes. It, it makes me cry. It might, cause it's super, it just, it, it's so inspiring to me mm. to see these people do this stuff. So if anyone ever wants to watch that, I know you can subscribe. If you buy something, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, but please watch that video just so you can see these people do what these people do. Cause trust me, your day will be changed by just seeing them. Wow. They're just incredible. Yeah. Well, I think we can all be, uh, we all should allow ourselves to be moved by, you know, the human experience. Uh, some there's, there's always a story out there. I mean, dude, I'll, I'll cry watching it like a, a Publix grocery store commercial for Thanksgiving, you know, when the, so loud, you know, the, the, the kids talking to the mom and, and then they're not together. And, and, and then the, the, the finds the recipe card and I, I don't know, like all this, 
just I'm with you. silly scenarios, but that are meaningful and 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 kind of touch you because how much value we put on on relationships typically and 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 our connections to family, to friends, to to people that are important in our lives. And uh I I I love I love that stuff. I love stories. They, like you're watching a sports thing on ESPN, then they go and they show the uh you know like the uh the, the kid that's unfortunately dying of some disease that like becomes like the the, the Michigan uh like super fan that like the whole team gets to rally around they play yep. their games like Me in too, honor man. of yep. this and, 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 and like that those types of stories so even Me my too. kids are like oh, why am i crying i'm like because Me it's you because it moves you it moves something inside you right? right it's supposed to if it doesn't that's not a good thing like that's right it should be you're not moving. your great grandfather in world war ii like you can be you can be moved it's okay you know that's what right. i mean like that's right yeah. yeah it's pretty pretty great yeah well i love it thank you so much for uh really getting personal and and sharing a lot of your journey in life. I, I I know there's, there's so many great takeaways from what we've talked about today for someone on the other end who has had some struggles and maybe long-term, maybe they've been dealing with something chronically for years and uh, don't really see much light at the end of the tunnel. Keep working hard. You never know what day is the turnaround day, the turning point, the conversation, the, the, the connection you make, the person you meet, that can kind of shift things for you uh, and never stop, never stop, never stop trying or and never give up on yourself. Please go check out Brian's uh, content on YouTube. And uh, we re- really just thank you. Thank you, Brian, for again. Thank for, you, man. This was yeah. awesome. This was such a good time. Yeah. I really great appreciate time. you having me. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. I knew it would be great conversation and it was uh, even better than I anticipated. So uh, all of you listeners uh, again, as I said, the star, if you could do one thing, it would be to think of someone in your life that you could share this episode with, or this show with, um, we would be so very grateful because that's why we do the show for, uh, for impact to, you know, to, to spread a message uh, of strength, uh, that we all, uh, can benefit from. You are strong by design, uh, and um, you got to live that out, walk that out every single day you wake up, put two feet on the ground. And so we just thank you so much for coming back, all you return listeners. And if this is the first time you've ever heard our show, well, then you're welcome because today was a really great conversation. Now you can go back and and binge uh, all those past episodes. God bless you. We'll be back next week with a, our next episode on Wednesday. As always, talk soon.